This little setup has everything you need to make great videos. Fast, cheap, and reliable, I'll be sharing it with you right now. And from now, the links to all of this gear will be available in the description down below. And while you're at it, make sure to subscribe, share, and like the video so that Cine Stuff can make videos like this. The whole point of this setup is the ability to shoot videos very fast without the need of opening up really bulky light stands or tripods or even diffusers that are not going to fit in this room. Let's begin with these extendable arms right here. They clamp on perfectly to my table. You just tighten them up like this and you can mount a camera, mic, light or even a monitor if you want as long as it's not very very heavy. I'd say the maximum load capacity would be around a kilo or a kilo and a half depending on where you have the arm extended to. They come with these screws but they also have these nice ball mounts provided with them. Some of these arms even come with a phone holder in case you want to do any phone shooting. And now, just like that, I can move the camera or mic to wherever I want. The nice thing about these arms is that their small and compact form allows you to pack them down into a small space and then just whip them out to the right position when you're ready to shoot. And in this current setup, I've switched my FS7 into this A7S Mark II because it's lighter, smaller and more versatile in terms of the type of shooting that I'm doing. But I've still linked up my A7S Mark II into an Atomos Ninja so that I could get the greater quality 10-bit image that I like. And in terms of my lens choice, I've switched to this amazing Zeiss Distagon 18mm wide lens because I would like you guys to see more of the environment around me and because specifically my office is quite tight so I want to make it look as big as possible. And I have to say that the optics of this lens and even the autofocus are really really good. Now in terms of lighting, I'm using this really cheesy ring light here and actually it does the job because I just want to use it as a side light, just getting a little bit of a highlight on the side of my face. But I have to watch out with the intensity, so I dim it down as much as possible, just enough to give me a difference in the exposure of this side of my face against this side. Now the really interesting bit is the key light. I got these two really cheap small lights that come with these gels and the little light stands and everything. I would definitely not recommend using the gels though because the colors go really really funky when you use them. Now the really good thing about these lights is that they actually pack a punch so what you could do with them to kind of soften them up a little bit because they just have these disgusting bare LED chips that create multiple shadows and all that stuff. So in order to get a usable quality light out of these lights what you need to do is you need to use the diffusion gel that they gave and completely do not point this light on you because it just looks horrible max them out and then bounce them on the wall in front of you so that it gives a bounced light that has a little softer qualities to it which actually kind of does the job here and don't forget it's not about the actual light and how bad it is or the quality of it or the color rendition it's actually about the tricks you have up your sleeve to be able to transform that light into something usable and yes this is a shameless push of this video for my mic, I've used this tiny little Rode mic that I found online that comes with this little cute suspension system. You just slot it above the camera and there you go, you have some sound. And yes, of course, I do clean and de-reverb my sound on Audition before putting it on my video. Now, if you're more into lighting for film and cinematic shots, make sure to check these videos out. And until next time, Cine Stuff out.